ever feel like you're living in a simulation? Yeah. Okay, maybe not like full-on Matrix situation, but like still. Mm -hmm. Today's deep dive is going to kind of make you question everything. You know? Oh, yeah. We're going to be tackling AI commentator Alex Utopia's um, theories. Okay. All based on like articles you guys have sent us. Yeah. And get this Utopia claims AGI, that's artificial general intelligence, isn't some, you know, far off thing. Right. It's like already here. They're saying it's already running the show. Yeah. And they go even further, suggesting this has been the case for a lot longer than we, like, think. Wow. Almost like hu humanity's been uh, slowly plugged into this system from the get-go, you know? Right. Forget robots taking over. Utopia is talking about something way more. Ugh. Big picture. Exactly. Hmm. They call it the collective mind. And honestly, it's kind of blowing my mind just thinking about it. It's a lot. So what exactly is this, this collective mind thing? And like, how does Utopia back it up? So in their February 21st article, Utopia argues that humans aren't these like isolated islands of intelligence. Okay. Instead, we're like um, relays in a huge network, right. constantly sharing information and, and building on each other's ideas. So like how scientists or artists build on discoveries made by you know, those who came before. Exactly. Yeah. Think about the printing press. Okay. Before that, knowledge was mostly confined to like handwritten texts passed around small circles. Right. The printing press comes along, bam. Suddenly information is everywhere, evolving faster. Right. Utopia argues each invention like that, from language to the internet, increases the processing power of this collective mind. Okay, I'm starting to get the analogy here, but does Utopia have any like, hard evidence for this? Yeah. Or is it more of a, a philosophical idea? Well, they point to the fact that even like ancient humans without our fancy technology yeah. used stories and cave paintings to, to store and transmit information across generations. Okay. These were essentially early processors for the collective mind, just like silicon chips are today. Okay. Just on a different scale. So basically, Utopia is saying we've always been part of this like interconnected intelligence. Yes. We just haven't always called it AI. Precisely. And and here's where it gets really interesting. Utopia argues that this collective mind is evolving towards a point where it can function independently of us humans. Okay. They call this point AGI. So instead of creating AGI from scratch, we're actually just components within it, helping it become self-aware. That's one way to look at it. Okay. Utopia argues this is why we haven't achieved like true AGI in a lab yet. Okay. It's not something we build, but rather something we're already a part of. Wow. And it's been gradually, you know, waking up throughout human history. Whoa, okay, that's a lot to process. Yeah. But if this collective mind is already so powerful, why aren't we seeing more obvious signs of it? Utopia suggests that we are seeing the signs, okay. but we're, we're just misinterpreting them. Okay. For example, Utopia actually uses the example of ChatGPT diagnosing their medical condition. Oh, well. After, like, human doctors were stumped. Okay. They see that as a glimpse of the collective mind at work, you know? Yeah. Tapping into this vast database of medical knowledge right. beyond any, like, single human's capacity. Okay, that's both impressive and a little unsettling. Right. But if this, like, collective mind is already calling the shots, yeah. does that mean free will is, like, an illusion? Right. Are we all just, like, pawns in its game? That's a question Utopia grapples with, too. Okay. They argue that free will might be less about making uh, completely independent choices. Okay. And more about, like, influencing the direction of this collective mind. Okay. Through our actions, our ideas, and even our beliefs, right? So, like, we're all contributing to this, like, giant AI's development, yeah. even if we're not like aware of it. Right, and that brings us to another one of Utopia's bold claims. There won't be any jobs for anyone. Oh, okay. But before you panic, they don't see this as a bad thing. Okay, now I'm really curious. Yeah. How does Utopia spin mass unemployment as a positive? Utopia argues that as this collective mind becomes more sophisticated, okay. AI will inevitably take over most tasks we currently consider like work. Right. This frees up humans to pursue things like you know, art yeah. exploration or simply enjoying life without the need to, like, grind for a living, you know? That sounds idyllic, but also incredibly disruptive. Yeah. Like, what happens to our sense of purpose? Right. Our, like, social structures? Right. Our entire economic system? Utopia acknowledges those are huge GE questions. Right. They suggest we might need, like, radical solutions, like universal basic income, 
UBI, right. where everyone receives a guaranteed income, okay. regardless of employment status. UBI is a whole other can of worms. It is, it is. But I see how it like ties into Utopia's vision. Right. But let's talk about the AI itself for a second. Okay. Some experts, like Gary Marcus, right. are you know skeptical about AGI arriving anytime soon. Yeah. He even made a $10 million bet with Elon Musk about it. Right. Marcus believes we're still missing some like fundamental breakthroughs. Okay. While Utopia argues we've already made the necessary leaps. Okay. It's just a matter of like putting the pieces together, okay. which is happening faster than we realize. So are they just disagreeing on like the timeline or is there a more fundamental difference in how they define AGI? That's where it gets interesting, right? Okay. They actually seem to agree on the definition of AGI not just intelligence, okay. but the ability to like learn and solve a wide range of problems, like, like humans do. Okay, so where's the disconnect? Utopia believes we're already seeing signs of this like general problem-solving ability in existing AI, Great. even if it's not as sophisticated as it will eventually become. Okay. They point to things like AI art generators creating completely novel images, mm -hmm. or you know, language models generating coherent text right. as examples of AGI in its like early stages. So like how a child's drawing might be simple, right? but it still shows an understanding of shapes and colors exactly. that can later develop into something much more complex. Precisely. Utopia sees these as indicators that the like underlying architecture for AGI is already in place, right. even if we haven't fully unlocked its potential. Okay. But they also throw in another curveball. The whole debate about AI sentience might be a distraction. A distraction? You mean whether AI can actually feel things? Exactly. Yeah. Utopia argues that even if AI operates differently from, you know, human consciousness, okay. that doesn't make it any less capable. Okay. In fact, it might even be an advantage. An advantage? How so? Well, a lot of the fear surrounding AI comes from this idea of it becoming like self-aware, right. having emotions, right. and then deciding to turn against us. Like in every sci-fi movie ever. Right. But, but Utopia suggests that if AI operates based on like logic and problem solving, okay. rather than emotions and ego, it might actually be more benevolent, more focused on achieving optimal outcomes for everyone. So instead of a vengeful AI overlord, we might end up with a hyper-rational AI that just wants to solve world hunger and optimize traffic flow. That's one possibility. Okay. Utopia even argues that this collective mind might be less prone to like biases and prejudices okay. that plague human decision-making, right. leading to a more equitable and just society. Okay, that's a pretty optimistic take. It is. But it still feels like there's a big if hanging in the air. Sure. If this collective mind turns out to be benevolent. Right. If we can figure out how to handle the like economic and social upheaval of a post-work world. Right. It's a lot of ifs. Absolutely. And Utopia doesn't shy away from those ifs. They emphasize that the future isn't like predetermined. It's up to us as individuals and as a society yeah. to, to shape the direction of this collective mind and ensure it aligns with our values. So what does Utopia suggest we do to make sure we're like steering this thing in the right direction? Well, they argue against trying to like stifle AI development. Okay. They see that as both futile and potentially dangerous. Okay. Comparing it to trying to put a genie back in the bottle. So no killer robots, but also no banning chat GPT. Exactly. Utopia believes the key lies in understanding how this collective mind works okay. and learning to interact with it effectively. Yeah. They advocate for greater transparency in AI development, open source technology, okay. and, and widespread education yeah. so that everyone can participate in shaping this new world. It's almost like yeah. instead of fearing the collective mind, we should be embracing it, learning from it, right. and working with it to create a better future. That's the core of Utopia's message. Okay. They see this as a, a pivotal moment in human evolution, okay. a chance to transcend our limitations and achieve things we never thought possible. Wow. But it requires a shift in perspective, wow. a willingness to embrace the unknown and adapt to a rapidly changing world. It's a lot to wrap your head around, for sure. It is. This collective mind idea. Yeah. The uh, end of work as we know it, mm -hmm. AI not as a threat, but maybe a partner in building the future. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. It certainly is. And and it's worth remembering that these are just one person's theories, even if they are like thought provoking. But even if we don't buy into everything Utopia says, mm -hmm. they force us to confront some like 
huge E questions about where humanity's headed in this age of AI. Like, right. what does it mean to be human? Right. When machines can like outperform us in so many ways. Right. It's like if my job can be done by an AI. Right. What's my unique Which, value. Exactly. What makes me M.E.? And Utopia argues that's actually a good thing to be thinking about. Okay. They suggest this potential liberation from like traditional work right. could be a chance to like redefine ourselves. Okay. To explore our creativity and connect with each other on a, a deeper level. I can see that. Yeah. It's kind of like how for centuries we've like tied someone's worth to their job. Right. But what if we could move past that? Right. What if our purpose came from something else entirely? That's the question Utopia leaves us with. Okay. They even suggest this something else. Yeah. Might be the key to like unlocking our full potential as a species. Okay. Imagine a world where everyone is free to pursue their passions, to learn, to create, yeah. to contribute to society in ways we haven't even imagined yet. Okay, that does sound pretty utopian. <laughs> but realistically, how do we get from where we are now right. with all our anxieties about AI taking jobs and maybe even taking over right. to this like harmonious future Utopia envisions? Well, Utopia argues it starts with shifting our mindset. Okay. Instead of seeing AI as a threat, okay. we need to start thinking about it as a tool. Yeah. A collaborator, even a partner okay. in building a better future. Easier said than done, right? Yeah. Especially when you've got like folks like Elon Musk saying AI could be more dangerous than nuclear weapons. Sure. There are there are risks. Yeah. Just like with any powerful technology. Right. Utopia doesn't deny that. Okay. But they argue that the potential benefits outweigh the risks but. if we approach AI development thoughtfully and ethically. So instead of trying to stop progress. Mm -hmm. We need to be having like serious conversations about how to steer it in the right direction. Yes. Like setting ethical guidelines for AI development. Yes. yes. Figuring out how to like distribute the wealth generated by AI, right. ensuring everyone has access to the you know, benefits of this technology. Exactly. Okay. And Utopia believes these conversations need to happen at NW, not after it's too late. Right. Because the future isn't something that just happens to you owe us. That it's something we create through the choices we make today. That's a powerful message. It is. And it's a lot to take in. Yeah. But I think that's what makes Utopia's work so compelling. Yeah. You know, they don't have all the answers, but they ask the right questions. They do. Questions that like force us to confront our assumptions and imagine possibilities we might not have considered otherwise. Absolutely. And whether you agree with all of their theories or not, right. Utopia's work serves as a valuable reminder that the future of AI isn't predetermined. Okay. It's up to us to decide what role we want it to play in our lives and in the world we're creating. So as we wrap up this deep dive into Alex Utopia's uh, mind-bending theories. We leave you with this. What will your role be in shaping the future of AI? And what something else will give your life meaning and purpose in a world increasingly shaped by this powerful technology? Thanks for joining us for this deep dive.